Well, there's some folks back there that is near and dear to my heart. Not that you all aren't, but these are really close. That's a surprise. Man, I need to turn around and look that direction a little more. Whoo! Uh, my daughter and brother, or brother-in-law, uh, brother in Christ, but son-in-law, uh, Byron and Lori Grover and Spencer and Autumn. Man, two of my most favorite grandkids. <laughs> Now, I say that because they're here, and I tell all my grandkids that, because they are some of my most favorite grandkids. Amen. I love them. It's good to see. Has God been good to you this week? Amen. Oh, man. Give him a big hand. I'm telling you what. God is so good. I'm reminded of the, you remember back, I show my age a little bit, but you remember back Nemo, finding Nemo? You remember the old shark when he's after, and he runs him in the little tube, you know, and the old shark, he's in that, that's good. Man, I'm telling you what, coming together in God's house is a good thing. Yes. Young people, Never, never, never stop doing that. I said that, <laughs> Brother James, I read a story <coughs> about Winston Churchill. Back during the war, Winston Churchill was like myself, getting some age on him, and he was a great orator. And he was called to speak at the, whatever the British Air Force Academy is called. I've forgotten the name to it now, pardon me. But anyway, they were having a graduation. And he was the guest speaker that came to speak to all of the uh, um, cadets, you know, and graduates. And uh, so getting up in years, they were hoping that everything would go fine with uh, uh, Mr. Churchill. And Mr. Churchill got ready to give his uh, uh, address, and he come up on the podium. He didn't put any notes there. He stood there, and he looked out over him. Didn't say anything. Everybody gets to it. You know, silence is golden. <laughs> but at some point, it's kind of nerve-wracking, you know. He didn't say anything. And finally, he says, never. And they thought, okay, he's, he's, he's into it now. Another big pause. Never. Another big pause there, thinking, man, he's lost his train of thought. <laughs> Three times. He said, never give up. Walked off the stage. We might say today he was a man of few words. Well, no, Winston Churchill wasn't. But the message was so good because when it seems like evil is winning never get up give up always get up stand up when you've done all you can do stand God says there's something about standing that's important We don't understand the way things are going in the world today. Uh, is there anybody here that understands how they, what, what is going on? We have lost, it seems, we have lost grasp on common sense. It seems like we have lost grasp, we've lost hold, we've lost the vision of what is good, and what is evil? Now, Isaiah, I believe it's chapter 9. God says, back in the days of Israel, and today, 
I think it's even much more relevant or just as relevant that God says, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil. We find that there is a great um, no, I won't say warfare, but yes, it is a warfare because God says that there is a constant war of evil and good. There is today a great um, controversy over truth. There's a big misconception. Oh, Satan's good at that, isn't he? Deceiving, giving misperceptions. Am I on? Misconception. Uh, okay, we're good. All right. Um, my hearing's bad, so I can't tell if I'm hearing me or not. So uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you can hear God. Don't, don't worry about me, but, but listen to God. But in today, it seems like there is a great sliding away. There's a great um, turmoil. There's, a, there's chaos. And, and we find that God has something to say about that because that's what the world is under the influence of Satan. And the farther we seem to get away from God's Word, the more chaotic things tend to be. The more gray areas that are not black or not white, the more areas that we have of saying, well, what is truth to me may not be truth to you. What is truth to you may not be truth to me. Now, I find that in God's Word, there's only one truth. <laughs> there's only one. And that is Jesus Christ. God's Word is truth. And we must continue. Young people, build your lives on that concept that God's Word is truth no matter what. Us older ones, don't be despaired. God hadn't lost the battle. The old cliche, I've read the back of the book, we win. But God tells us that these days are coming. God tells us that they're going to get worse than this. Now, the word I want to leave with you today is foundations. Foundations are important. God's Word has a lot to say about foundations. In Psalms 11, I want to read two verses of Scripture from the book of Psalms. Psalms 11, verse 3 says, well, let me just, it's a short chapter, and it's a good one. Let's just read the whole chapter. Psalms chapter 11, concentrate on verse 3, but it starts out, In the Lord I put my trust. How say you to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily or secretly shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Legitimate question. That is a question. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Verse 4 says, The Lord is in His holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that loves violence, his soul hateth. Oh my goodness. God is love. You mean there's something God hates? Yes. It's called sin. Amen. God loves sinners. Yes. Aren't you glad? But God hates sin. Because God in his omniscience, his all-knowing, 
sees what sin will do to a life. To a marriage. To a family. To a nation. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstones, and a horrible tempest. This shall be their portion in their cup. For the righteous Lord loves righteousness. His countenance does behold the upright. That little song that says, No, never alone. Oh, I used to wish I could sing. Now everybody else wishes I could sing. <laughs> no, never alone. He promised never to leave me. Right. Never to leave me alone. Oh, yes. Now, since you're in Psalms, turn over to Psalms chapter 82. Psalms chapter 82, verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All of the foundations of the earth are out of course. That's an all-wise and all-knowing God that made that statement. David wrote the words. This wasn't a, an idea that come upon David of his own getting. It was something that is inspired by Almighty God, just like the rest of this holy book. It is the inspired, inerrant, accurate, up-to-date word of life. And so as we think about this, I may go to several of these other um, uh, verses of Scripture. There are several, uh, but I may just give them to you and, and you can go and read them later because they work with the concept of foundations. Now, what are the foundations? What are the foundations we're talking about here? What is the world built on? What is our life built on? What is the secular society out here built on? What are they counting on? What are they depending on? The foundations is what you build on. You have to have a foundation. Jesus said this, those that obey my word, chapter 16 I think it is, those that obey my words, I will compare them to a man who builds his foundation on a solid rock, who builds his house on a solid rock. And those who reject, those who disdain, those who, who just have a better idea. I'm driving one. It's called a Ford. Lord help him. <laughs> I'm telling you, there is a better idea than what this world is looking to today. And it wasn't Ford that had the better idea. It was God. Amen. God had the best idea because his idea was a holy and a righteous, a perfect idea that if man would simply live by it and obey it, and, and it, life would be so much better. But we have chosen not to. Now, in chapter 82, it says the foundations of this world are out of course. Now we can go back into the beginning, back into the book of Genesis. And I want to I say that today Solomon's word is very accurate and, and comes to bear in our minds uh, the truth of God's word when Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Right. Everything that is has been 
There's nothing. Vanity, vanity, all is vanity in this world. Now, let me stop with that thought. There's some good things in the world. God created this world and he looked out and he said it is good. God does all things well. God makes good things. It's when the devil steps in and man gets hold and, and because we can't see past the end of our nose, we mess things all up. But the foundations began to shake in the Garden of Eden when Satan says through the serpent to Eve, has God really said? Satan may have spoke to you somewhere this week, somehow this week. Is that really what the Bible means? won't hurt. Everybody's doing it. I read a little saying one time that said right is right even if nobody's doing it. And wrong is wrong even if everybody's doing it. All we like sheep have gone astray. None of us can feel better about us than any of the rest of us because all of us are one of us. Whew, I got through that. <laughs> I worried this week. I thought I messed that up just like I do a lot of other things. <laughs> but I didn't. God, miracles happen. God still does good things. The foundations. The foundations of what we build on. Isn't it, wouldn't it be a shame... To build our life upon the things that to us seem good and and man we've we've done good and and I'm reminded of a of a story about a grandfather I don't know if I've told you this or not you know I, I wake up in a new world every day but it's a good story so if I have just bear with me and think about it because it, it really the point is good but this grandfather and his grandson hey Spencer you wake Okay, uh, grandson, I'm, I'm picking on him. I knew he was. Grandson says, Grandpa, man, I, I'm about to graduate out of high school. Now, Spencer's about to graduate out of high school. He swear I'm picking on him today, but I'm not. And he says, man, he says, I, I just can't wait to get out of high school. And his grandpa says, well, what then? He said, wait a minute, I'm going, to, I'm going to college. I'm going to college and get a good education. Well, that's good. What then? Well, he said, I'm going to go and get a good job, a job that pays well, and, and, and I'm going to make a good living. That's good. What then? Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to find just the right girl, and I'm going to get married. Well, that's good. What then? Well, he said, if we're going to raise a family and, 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 and uh, I'll enjoy my job and work and, and we'll, we'll pay for our home and, and, and uh, that's good. What then? Well, he said, uh, one day I'll retire. Now, kids, they'll all have a good life and, and be out and, and, and I can enjoy my retirement. Well, that's good. What then? Well, I says, we'll do some traveling and do some things. Okay, that's not bad, Natasha. That's not bad. What then? Well, he said, someday I'll probably end up and I'll die. Grandpa said, what then? There you go. What then? Kids... It seems like you've got a hundred years ahead of you, and I hope and pray maybe you have. But I'll leave that in God's hands because only He knows our days. But the important thing is to build your life, whether it be one year, ten years, fifty years, or a hundred years, 
Build it upon the Word of God. Build it upon the truth of God. Build it upon the assurance that this life is not all there is to life. Because this is a prelude to eternity. We live in an element called time, and it is just an hors d'oeuvre of eternity. Time is limited. Eternity is not. Eternity is forever. Adrian Rogers says, let me tell you what eternity means. Eternity. Now he said, let me tell you what forever means. He said, it means forever. God's Word means just exactly what it says. So we build upon the foundation, okay, not the foundations of this world. The foundations were so shaken that in Noah's day, God says, I'm going to destroy it. There's coming a day, there's coming a day as surely as you are here, as surely as I'm standing here talking to you today, there is coming another day when God is going to destroy this thing called earth. Not just the planet, but all of the sin and the degradation and the influence of of the devil, of Satan, that has contaminated and thwarted and distorted all of the good that God has made. Now you may be out there wondering, just like I do, I, I, have you ever, confession's good for the soul now, have you ever wondered, why is God taking so long? Why is God, why doesn't God just say, he could. Oh, yes. Ask Aiken. He could. But God, in His Word, tells us that He is a long suffering God. He is a loving God. He is a righteous and a holy God. He is a God that does all things well. He is a God that cannot sin. But that word long-suffering, you look through the Bible and every time you find that word long-suffering being used, it is in relationship to humanity. Not only with us one-to-one, -one, to, you know, parallel this way, but to God this way. God is long suffering. Why? That John three sixteen, so that no man perish. Right. Every day we have an opportunity. I don't know if there's one here today that has never asked Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior. I would hope in my heart that there is not a one here that if the Lord trumpet sounds and the rapture takes place that that however many is here there'd be that many holes in the ceiling Boom! right out of here we go we won't make a hole believe me but we will leave in the twinkling of an eye at the sound of the trump that's truth my friend get ready it's coming do not fear it Notice that when Jesus was, was raised from the dead, every time that he came back to his disciples, the first thing he would say is, fear not, don't be afraid. A friend of mine's really hung up. With the concept that in the Bible it talks about the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you today, God's not hung up over it because they are one of the same. But in the New Testament, most generally, not always, most generally, it talks about the Holy Spirit rather than the Holy Ghost. I, you, you, most of you probably don't know me very well. Man, I'm a biggest wimp.
I do not like horror movies. I'm telling you what, and I don't like spiders either, but that's beside the point. Amen. <laughs> when you start talking about ghosts, you get kind of a... <laughs> now, in our part of the country, we've got a lot of hillbillies. I are one. A lot of people don't talk about ghosts, Nedra. They talk about haints. Not ain'ts, but haints. Is that a haint? No. No, I don't think that's a haint. That's a neighbor playing tricks. Back to the Bible. In this world, we think of the foundations that are going to be destroyed. Even now, they're, they're out of course. That's why there's so much chaos going on. It's because we have lost grasp of the truth of God's Word and we're not reading it. Not only the lost world out there, listen, in the founding days of our country, there has never been a day, there's never been a year when everybody was a godly person. But there was a day when everybody reverenced the Word of God. Our forefathers, in drawing up the, 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 the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, used this book and the principles of this book as a foundation for that. And 400 years we have lived in the essence of God's blessing because they, with great foresight, saw the need for this country if it was ever going to succeed. And they didn't know, my friend, whether it would or not. But you know what Patrick Henry said? Give me liberty or give me death. That's kind of what the three Hebrew children were saying. <laughs> oh, King, remember, we don't know. We know that God can spare us from your burning furnace. But whether he does or not, we're still not going to, we're, not, we're still not going to bow down to that, that monument. Right. Now that's being steadfast in your faith. Amen. And that's what we need the church to be today. That's what we need our Christians to be today. That's what we need our young people to be today. And I want to tell you, once you start doing that, and I'm not saying that you haven't been, please don't take me that, but kind of like it was in our Sunday school class this morning, Connie brought out that, that, that none of us are perfect. All of us need to, all of us can pray more. All of us could pray more. All of us should pray more. None of us are perfect, but we know the one who is Christian, and he says, I will be in you, I will be with you, and I will never leave you. Right. So our foundations, Christian, are sure today. Now, there may be some Christians here, and I can tell you, I, I, that was a good session uh, in Sunday school, talking about, have you ever been in a situation where you wondered what God was doing and wondered how you were going to come through this ordeal and this situation? I'm telling you, I can tell you of some things that have happened in truly in my life. that but by the grace of God right. all would have been lost so Christian let me tell you right now Satan every day will seek to shake your foundation But Matthew 7 says, greater is he that is in you. I will be with you. Jesus' words. 
upon this rock, this rock, Jesus, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. <laughs> Satan, give it your best shot, dude. Your days is numbered. That's right. He's still winning little skirmishes and little battles. Because sometimes when we get shaken, we lose focus. Hey, brother, you've been in the military. And they say one of the aims of the drill sergeants is to cause you to lose focus. Now, their purpose is so that you will remain on target. You will not be dissuaded. David, are there examples of foundations being shaken? Look at David, King David. Great example. God, through the prophet, anointed him king. And David ran for his life for years before God's timing put him on the throne. It wasn't that God was slack. It was that God had a lot of things that he needed to teach David in the meantime. Oh, well, that's just one. Well, what about Job? What about Job? My friend, we're going through things. Job went through a lot of things. And Job didn't understand. And Job just kept saying, oh, if I could just talk to God, if I could just talk to God. Sister Nedra, I, <laughs> I remember Walt used to say we'd get to talking. He used to say there was a time in my life when it just seemed like God wasn't listening to my prayer. I think most of us probably have been there, done that. But never fear, because just like Walt, we found out that, oh, he knew exactly and he was working even when we couldn't see him work. And so we trust in a God who can do all things. We trust in a God who will not be thwarted. We trust in a God who will not be overcome. Two o'clock yet? Nope. Okay. So let's look at that. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? He wasn't talking about the world. He was talking about believers. When our foundations are shaken, what can we do? What Satan, let me tell you what Satan wants to do. If he can destroy your foundation, if he can take good people away from their hope in God's word, in God, if you can persuade them that their religion is a cheat, a jest, you ruin them, you break their hearts, you disillusion them, and you make them, as the Bible says, of all men most miserable. Paul said, if we have hope in Christ in this life only, we are of all men most miserable. Our faith, our trust is in a empty tomb. Our hope and our security is in a Christ who rose on the third day according to the scriptures. And when he rose, he gave that hope, he said, and because I live, you shall live. Death has no hold on us anymore. Oh, these old bodies, they're going to fade away. But I want to tell you, you're not. <coughs> you are a living soul breathed from the very breath of God into the nostrils of Adam. And that living spirit became a soul. 
That soul became Adam. Adam lived in a body. You live in a body. This is not you. This is your house. I need a makeover. <laughs> but, amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, my friend, one of these days... We're going to have it. Yes, One of these days, we're going to have a new body that doesn't grow old. And a new body that doesn't hurt. Come on, Come on. Oh, my friend. A, a, a new body that has no heartaches. No more tears. Right. No more broken hearts. No more broken lives. Let's go over to Peter's epistle in the New Testament. And Peter says, now look, folks, we didn't just follow a cunningly devised fairy tale. This is truth. Just as Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we too will rise from the dead. I got a strange sense of imagination we were talking about Lazarus this morning you know Lazarus died in four days he was in the grave and Jesus said Lazarus come forth and here he comes out of the tomb you know they unwrap him and he goes about life and I get to thinking okay Lazarus did die one day what do you suppose Mary and Martha was thinking well I wonder how long it take Jesus to get here today <laughs> <laughs> Dwight L. Moody giving an interview one day and the interviewer asked Dwight L. Moody he said uh, Dr. Moody he said uh, no you're a great man of God he said uh, are you afraid to die and he said no no I'm not afraid to die in fact of the business young man one of these days you're going to hear that D.L. Moody is dead. But son, don't you believe him because I'm going to be more alive on that day than I've ever been in my life. I'm telling you, the best is yet to come. There's a great story about that miracle in Cana at the wedding. The governor says to the groom oh man you you kept the best kool-aid to last uh, i put the kool-aid in there by the way said that's not your normal but let's go back behind the story who provided that last wine for the feast the best is yet to come because jesus is the best he is the best So, hold on. Don't give in. Remember what I said last Sunday about God's rest? It is through believing that we enter into God's rest. Right? right. But it is through obedience that God's rest enters into us. There you go. And that's God's whole purpose is that you and I and every person can be at rest in Him. For He is our assurance. He is our hope. He is our security. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talking about uh, uh, going out into eternity in the avenue of death. And he says good people would be undone if they had not a God to go to, a God to trust in, and a future bliss to hope for. Heaven. Oh, uh, is it, is it uh, Gold City? Um, I get my groups mixed up. But there's a new song out. hadn't been out too long. Heaven is not my home. Signature sound maybe. This world is not my home. Heaven is. This world is not your home. Heaven is meant to be. It's up to you to choose. 
I hope you'll choose for Jesus Christ today. Now I can assure you that if you today, and if you've never asked him to come into your heart and forgive your sin, to give you peace and joy within, if you've never done that, please, please do that today. Because then, and only then, will you be ready to walk out into eternity whenever, whenever God sees fit to call you home. It is a divine appointment we all will meet. For it is appointed unto every man once to die, and then the judgment. So today is the day of salvation. Today, as we sang a song of invitation, think about it. Where do you stand? Where is your foundation? What are you standing on? What are you hoping in? What are you looking forward to? I hope it's not the world system. I hope it's not Wall Street. I hope it's not the stock market. I hope it's not false religions and the world's full of them. But my friend, right here is the way Right here is the manual that can tell you. And any Christian in here should be able to, to help you find a way simply by saying to you what has already happened to them. I've had people say, oh, I, 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 Pastor, I, I need you to come and talk to somebody. Why? Not that we pastors don't want to. But I want to tell you, any Christian knows what you did to become a Christian. Right. And so therefore, cookie cutter that dude, it's the same thing. You go to the master, you humble yourself and say, man, I blew it. I am a sinner. But your word says that if I will ask, you will forgive. Amen. And you will give me a new heart and a new life. Oh, my friend, it is so, so worth it. Don't let anything, don't let, as the old cliche says, don't miss heaven for the whole world. Heaven, you don't want to miss. You come today. If you've never asked him to be your savior, you come today. Because today, Jesus is here and he wants you to find him. He's been seeking you. He's been giving you words. He's been, been putting people in your life. He's, he's put Christians before you. You understand. You really do. Lost person, join in and become God's children, not just his creation. Okay, as we sing a song of invitation today. Will you bow your heads with me in prayer? Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Father, take these feeble efforts of speaking and proclaiming God and bless them by your power and your authority. And Lord, touch each and every heart here today, Lord. And if there be one here that is not sure about tomorrow, is not sure about their salvation, God, give them strength and courage to step out and, and make that decision today so that they, like Paul, can say, I know in whom I have trusted and I have believed and I know that he is able to keep that which he, I have entrusted to you. Lord, thank you that you're able to do this even today. In Jesus' name, amen.